This is the Pac Football Show on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head over to Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap with your hosts, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi, along with Thunder Wolves head coach, Philip Veal. And good evening, everybody. Welcome. Pac Football Show, Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House. They're all eating. I well, I don't know if Ben's got it up loud enough where they can hear. Hey, everybody, we're here. There, there we go. go. Okay, that's better. There we go. Man, oh, man. You give him one job. They're all eating. Come on, Ben. All right. <laughs> Jim Brooks, Joe Servi. What's your name? Phil Beal, right? Okay. It's the coach, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> We've got Donovan English and uh, seen in Chapel. Sinan. Sinan Chapel. Sinan? Sinan yes, Chapel. Sinan Chapel. Seen in <laughs> Chappelle. <laughs> yeah, well, well, eventually, before your career is over, we'll have it right. Yes. You know, but, he was uh, only our Mac freshman of the year. Yeah, right? exactly. We probably ought to get it right. <laughs> yeah. You know what I love about he, he loves us up before the games in a practice. You know, you don't see many offensive linemen, you know, love you up, say, congr you know, let's go and stuff. And, man, he's just the most friendly guy to be around. Always brings a smile. Yes, sir. There's yes, no sir. doubt about right? it. Right? Plus, oh, this yeah. is, you're, you're a veteran of the show now. Oh, yeah, you're too. Ready to rock and roll. Right? Yeah, two-timer. Yes, a lot see, of pressure to be three and four next year and the year after. Sanon oh, is yes, comfortable yes, yes. right now. Go. Donnie, yeah, he's a little nervous. <laughs> he was like, Coach, what are the questions they're going to ask me? What do I need to wear? <laughs> What's your favorite color? <laughs> yeah, see, that's what you do. You're not afraid of a bright light, are you, when we're no, shining it on you? That, that's the best about favorite. radio is that we don't care what you wear. Radio, <laughs> that's we, right. we don't that's care right. what you wear. Yes, sir. Well, I, yeah, look I, at you. I, yeah, always. You look good. Baby, always. I know Adam State cares what you wear. They, they're seeing you in their sleep right now. Oh, yeah. That's right. Well, Phil, another uh, a little dicey there in the first quarter. Adam State, give them credit. They came out ready to go, didn't they? That kind of got you guys' attention early on. Well, I, I told you all in the pregame, you know, if we, uh, if we give a team hope, you know, if it's a team full of transfers and if they believe they can win, they're going to they're gonna play hard. And we gave them every reason to feel that way in the first quarter. You know, especially offensively and, and on teams. And, um, you know, we, we I was proud of the way we responded. Responded really well on Saturday and, and rattled off, what was it, 56 straight or something like that. And, um, answered the bell. I had to laugh because I, you won 66 to 10 and trailed twice in that game. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't how you start, it's how you finish. I know, exactly. That's exactly what you told me after the game. But, Jim well, and I were it's good to Phil thinks like you. He has it at 56. In a row. We had an argument it's in the booth. 58. I said, it's I 58. Go, it's 58, Joe. 58 plus 8 is 66. He goes, no, it's 56 in a row. I'm like, no, it's 58. No, I, and I, you know, my, my math teacher. teacher. I, I'm, not, I'm a football coach. I ain't yeah. a math guy. I promise you that. My, my math teacher here in District 60 was misinformation. So <laughs> she was great. You know, she was she, at the reunion. She Saturday was at the too. reunion, misinformation. She said, yeah. you're still dumb as dirt. But uh, <laughs> 58 unanswered. And. It, like once you guys kind of, I don't want to say got your bearings, but like we used to say, they got the feel of the gym and, yeah. then, and then it was just off to the races. Everything just, you guys started mowing guys, defense started playing. I mean, the defense has played great all season. Yeah, they played great all game too. Yeah. I mean, really, they, they gave up three points in the first drive when they had a short field and and then we threw a pick six. And other than that, I mean, they, they completely dominated that game, you know, and uh, very similar to what we've seen them do all year long. So Donnie, when you when you're in the when the when you're in the defensive room, do you guys, you know, there was ten points scored, but you didn't give up a touchdown. Do you, do you guys talk about that? Uh, yeah, we just that's our goal. We don't want to give up any scores. We want to be a sound defense. And when you turn on the tape, you see a tough, gritty defense that runs to the football and makes plays. How bad does Coach Foskey want to shut out? Uh, How man, bad does he want to shut out? I I probably pretty bad. <laughs> 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 Last year, I don't know if you remember, it was uh. Fort Lewis game when it was a long run there. No, actually, it was Highlands. Yeah. Okay. When Chance fumbled the ball and they picked it up oh, and scored a touchdown. Yes. And uh, and that was that was their only score that game. And and Monday morning when when Coach Foskey came into the office, Chance Fuller had a El Super Taco burrito on his door. And said, "I'm sorry." <laughs> <laughs> nice, uh, nice. Well, then the uh, second quarter came along and it just. Once you guys got your bearings and the offense got going, it seemed like there wasn't anything they could do to stop you. A lot of different things working in that game. Yeah, I mean, we just, you know, we, we got to take care of the football offensively, and that that was the main thing. You know, we've we've uh, we've done a good job all year long of, of taking care of the football. You know, very uncharacteristic to have three turnovers by us in the game, and and give credit to Adam State. They they were ripping at the football, and 
Um, you know, even even Howard's fumble, you go back and watch it on tape. I mean, he's got two hands on the ball the whole way through. And, uh, they, they, they just did a good job getting after it. And, you know, we, we uh, hopefully, you know, we learn from that and, and grow and get better. And, you know, again, I, I, I'm still waiting for us to put a full game together. You that's, know? that's pretty close, though, 700 yards plus offense, running the ball, throwing the ball. Got everybody contributing. Line mowing. I mean, it was it was. We yeah. we were watching this. Thing. I mean, it was like picture perfect textbook. Even on defense, it seems like well, there's that stunt. Where's that? I mean, they, everything that you draw up in on the whiteboard was working. Well, that's and that's you know the sign of a good team is is again they challenge them to play regardless what the scoreboard said all game long. You know, don't even look at it. I said, you know, I I want you to I want you to play every single play is for your brother and play to our standard and let the scoreboard take care of itself at the end of the day. And uh, they did that, you know, and yeah, it was a little shaky at first, but they responded really well and there was no panic. And any one of these guys, I think one of the coaches, I mean, we knew what we have and, and uh, executed in, in the second, third and fourth quarter, you know, and you mentioned our, our offensive production. I think the thing that's, that's the best about that is, you know, 13 different guys caught a ball on Saturday, yeah. eight different ball carriers on Saturday, you know, and, Got a lot of people involved on the offense and on the defense that that have worked really hard and and uh, got 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 some time in when it really counts. So does Roman Fuller count in the stats about the most accurate passer in NCAA <laughs> Division Two? <laughs> hasn't thrown in uh, incompletion yet. I know it. He's done a good job. He, he's so poised back there, you know, and he's he's uh, he's understanding the offense better and better every single week. And, and you know, we're going to see more Roman for sure. In the future, so he's he's done a good job. Well, I think Jim said it perfect though when he came in. You know, it was time for Devin to sit. You know, it was a good time to get some playing time for him. But there was no drop off. Oh yeah, like yeah. yeah he's, I mean, it was in that as you, as a coach, as an offensive lineman, if, even as a teammate, you got to just think, wow, there's no drop off. Well, I mean, I've I've gone through seasons in my career where we've won really important games with our third string quarterback yeah and it is so important to create depth and um you know roman has battled stevie has battled they they both have battled like crazy to to put us in a position where we feel comfortable with any three of those guys going in the game and executing at a high level you know and uh so it's it's a luxury from that standpoint you know but it's it's a necessity as well i thought there were a couple of really maybe a eh, handful, big moments in the ball game. One of them was the old-fashioned Green Bay power sweep, Phil, when you scored a touchdown on. I mean, we get a seal here and a seal here, and you're running up the alley. I mean, that's exactly what happened with Russell. I mean, you kicked – I can't remember who pulled with you. You it was, did. It was me and Domingo. Yeah. Okay. And, and, I mean, it's just, front. and it's just like you got shot out of a cannon right up the sideline. Yeah, pin and pull scheme, you know, and uh, you can talk about it. Yeah, so what's crazy is uh, that morning I said, Coach, when we run – that play for the first time we're gonna score he just kind of laughed and then we called it we scored i was like i told you i told you <laughs> <laughs> which coach did you have to tell that to coach Nacken. okay yeah yeah so, and then i kept asking for it too i was like tell coach brown to run it again <laughs> so yeah, how would you just, have success run it again right exactly yeah just make him stop it, it. And, and if it was a green bay package you'd be running it and running it yeah running exactly it. That's all with jim taylor coming right behind your paul horning with the old school you guys don't even know who that is you'll have to go to your youtube videos and say <laughs> but oh you that's who he was talking about that was in the 60s I get a lot of that lately, Joe. How old are you? I had a Dion Warwick. Yeah, he, he pulled out Dion Warwick during the broadcast. Saturday. That's what he texted. Do you even know how? who Dion Warwick? I don't. Warwick. So you he's don't like, even know who Dion Warwick. Like, one of the greatest singers of all time in the '60s. I, yeah, I've never. Do heard you of know him. the way to San Jose? We were trying to figure out what city were we were trying to figure out. We got it wrong anyway. Which was we were just were trying to. Somebody was from yeah. California. We were trying to figure out what part of California yeah. was and it. North, North Cal, SoCal. We didn't know. So I got the old text. How? old are, are you, you? <laughs> i go yeah yeah i know I during know. the broadcast yeah, so you exactly. know it's so people it's are listening and they're just looking go Dion i Warwick. try to entertain everybody in the audience you know i i'm getting to that age as well where you know my movie references are going right over these guys head. they'd have no idea what i'm talking about i'm like what do you mean you've never seen old school and they're no. like no yeah all right what's your favorite movie i like uh, like all the tyler perry movies like the, okay just that series okay Anything what about like you space jam Space Jam. Space Jam. Space Jam. The Everybody original? Right. The, OG? Hooper, the OG or the, the new one? The, the oh, old man. one. Yes. The yeah. First one. Okay. My mom had it on DVD. We used to watch it all the time. Yeah, you can't have the, the new one was weak. I, well, I, yeah. I'm surprised you knew about the old one. Well, that's right. the one he watches. My favorite one. See? To this day. 
What's what? your favorite? Do, do you have a do you have favorite, favorite movie? Sports movie? We oh, can, a sports we can movie. narrow it down yeah. to sports movie. I would have to say Remember the Titans. Okay. You know, I think that's a, such a great that's movie. That's a good one. You know, that's a good one. I, I, have you guys, either of you guys seen the program? No, I, I have not. So. See, I have <laughs> that's a great football it's movie. It's kind of sad because they're big stud, man. He came from porn and he blows out his knee and yeah. men don't have nothing. Spoiler it. alert. Yeah, sorry. It's all good. <laughs> He dies. The boat sinks in Titanic. <laughs> well, let's talk about your guys' background since we got you here on the show. Donovan, why don't you tell us where you're from and uh, how you ended up getting here to CSU Pueblo. It's a uh, long and winding road sometimes. Yes, sir. Um, I'm Donovan English. I'm from Pomona, California, which is uh, somewhere in the Inland Empire. Um, I, I played receiver in high school, and then when Coach V and Coach Matt came and recruited me, they wanted me a DB. And my uncle is actually the defensive coordinator at Louisville right now. So um, came in, uh, just played DB and trusted what uh, Coach V and Coach Mack had for me. And it's been it's been paying dividends for me. How was that that switch? Were you open to it? Did Were you going grudgingly? You say, man, I like – you know, well, you prove you can catch the ball. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to play. So I, wherever they put me, I was going to go as hard as I could and – go there and just try and play but I, I knew like receiver I had just trained receiver so much and when I made the switch to corner it was like everything was new and I, I could get better so much quickly so much quicker and uh, it was I, from there it's been off to the races. Now you seem pretty mild and mannered <laughs> and, and polite compared to that room. Oh, uh, you don't know you don't know young strap. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is, 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 is he one of the gang? Oh, oh okay. Yeah. So, so off the air, you're a little bit more in your face. Uh, on the field, yeah, I'm a, I'm okay. an in your face guy. I okay. wore a lot too. So. Well, yeah, there's a whole room of them. Yeah, but that, I used to hang with the DBs because they were the most fun. Yeah, BIA. They smoke talk. What does that yeah. mean? <laughs> Best in America. Yeah. BIA. I'll be at that. Uh, I think that's what it means. But okay. BIA. Yes, All right. Okay, got that new one there, Joe. That's what we're striving for. Every week. I like it. So now tell us about you. I know everybody listening, they know Mr. Chapel because he just mows people and he's a sparkling personality. Plus, he is the RMAC, reigning RMAC freshman of the year. Yes, that don't get, offensive lineman, that's that's pretty good. Yes, sir. So funny story. Uh, in high school, I played O-line and D-tackle. I'm from Forward, Texas. And uh, Coach Foskey and Coach Herm are actually the ones that recruited me to play defensive tackle. Oh. And then I got here, and our O-line coach at the time last year, he was like, you got to play O line, and at that point, I wanted to kind of still play D tackle, but my I was informed that my best way to get on the field was to play O line. Okay. So I started fall camp O line, just worked my way up to that starting position, and then just it just went. Now you good. played both last year. You played both guard and center. I just played center. Just played. I center. played left tackle for or two left, games. Okay, left tackle. Yeah. That's right. Moved him out a little bit. But yeah, you're, you're a center, injury. right? Oh yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. His first start was Grand Valley last year. Yeah. Yes. Too bad that wasn't fun. It was it was it was, it was, that pretty was a great fun. game. It was pretty fun. That was a fun, that was a fun atmosphere. I was uh I was pretty nervous, but once that first snap, I was like I was good, you know. But uh, I just say one of the main things was just trusting my preparation. Yeah. And then my brothers, they talked to me a lot. And then uh, Coach B Hill and Coach Foskey and then my older line coach, Coach Brown, they all just reassured me that they put me out. Of, they wouldn't put me in this position if they didn't believe I could do it. So that just gave me the confidence to go out and just have a great freshman year. Well, in Grand Valley, a bunch of little guys. Yeah, <laughs> child's play. Yeah, well, your confidence is shown because you've become quietly one of the leaders of the ball club, even yes, being a sophomore. You're only a season and a half into it. Yes, sir. So one of the main things I want to do this this year was lead the O line and command them and be more dominant than we were last year. And just one of the main things I keep reiterating is that how we do on Saturday uh, it reflects how we do in practice. So one of the main things I tell them every week is we have to envision the game on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So like that pin and pull that we ran on Saturday against Adam State, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we ran it and popped it in practice. So it's just it's very fulfilling to where you're practicing and then you're just being rewarded in the game. And it's like it all just comes together. It's awesome. Do you love listening love to these two young men? <laughs> yeah, just, I love it. I mean, they're kind of telling it how it is, but it's eloquent. And yeah, I, I think it's the, that's why I love this program. I agree. <laughs> all right. Got another segment to come up. First, we're going to tell you about one of our sponsors, Rustler Implement. They're your local premier Kubota Case International Harvester in New Holland dealer. Please like their Facebook business page for a chance to win one of two $100 gift cards and receive all the updates and promotions they are offering. Same name, same family, 
since 1960. We are at Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House. We're going to have some grub out here in a little bit for you guys. You guys ready? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Um, you ready yes, for the hot sir. honey? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, you they said they don't have hot honey. honey. Huh? No hot they honey. said they, they ran out of hot honey. Supposedly. What? what? Well, we'll have to talk to Ryan. I bet he's got to try <laughs> He's going to have to make a run. <laughs> he's going to have to make a run. Yes, sir. All right. You know why they run out? Yeah, we've been pumping it for two weeks well, now. The, my staff today, I, they're like, it's Wing Wednesday, and they they on the board, hot honey, and they, <laughs> there was a favorite one. I was like, golly, I shouldn't have told them to order that, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, we'll settle for teriyaki if we have to have that. All right, we'll come back after this time, but we'll talk more about Saturday, plus uh, look forward to uh, this week's game. It's uh, homecoming and Hall of Fame weekend all in one right here. Come back. It is the Pack Football Show on Fox Sports Pueblo. This is the Pac Football Show on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head over to Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap with your hosts, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi, along with Thunder Wolves head coach, Philip Veal. And welcome back. Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House. It is the Pac Football Show. Get everybody dialed back up here so everybody's on board with us. Steel City Solar Roofing is proud to serve Southern Colorado community as a locally owned company to uphold the values that matter to you. Proudly partner with Santa Isabel Electric, provide the best solutions for all your energy needs alongside solar and roofing. They are now your premium Tesla dealer in Pueblo, offering Tesla power walls, batteries, and EV chargers. Can't wait to continue serving the community with the best in energy solutions. Steel City Solar and Roofing, proud sponsor of the PAC Football Show. Welcome back. We are at Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House. Waiting for our grub to arrive. We realize they're out of hot honey, but uh, we're going to be able to survive without it. And what do you got coming for us, Joe? Uh, Big Ben was on the order today, so we'll have to see. Oh no! Yeah, you know well, I, what are we going to have? Plain cheeseburgers with ketchup only. P plain cheeseburgers, ketchup only. That's all we're getting here. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! A <laughs> funny guy. <laughs> I'm funny how? Like a clown? Yeah, how am I funny? How am I funny? Uh, we, we, everybody just opened their, their pet stat sheet to, to the quickie stats versus out of state. Yes, and, let's see and, that. And it's, it's even more gaudy than I remember. 715 <laughs> yards of total offense. And I'm looking at their, their, their passing. And Alexander, Alex Grado, he, has, he was 13 to 20, 13, 12 to 31, and he had two picks. Hmm. Who had the picks? Who had the picks? Uh, I have one of those. There you go. <laughs> there you go. What a baby. Tell us about that. I mean, it was a great play. You know, you guys you guys seem like ball hawks the whole game, though. Yes, sir. Um, it was a good cover three play. I read the quarterback, seen his eyes, and when the ball's in the air, I got to go get it. So, yeah. You know, the, a really that. good DB would have stayed on his feet there. And tried to return uh, it and I trust his hands. I should. I got to trust it next time. <laughs> but I got to get some yards. So my next interception, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some yards on that one. KDOT got some yards on his. Sure yeah. did. 50, 50 yards. yards. Coach Fossey almost got knocked out. He showed incredible balance. I mean, we, he stuck the landing, I first of it. all. And then somehow got going again. That was, that was pretty amazing. It was run. awesome. EP drove his receiver, whoever he was guarding, into onto the sideline. So oh, Eli Pittman. Thank Excuse you. Excuse me. Uh, he drove his receiver into the sideline, and that receiver's helmet hit Coach Foskey right in the head. <laughs> I, we got that pick, and, I, and I, he's like, kind of, I'm like, what's wrong with you? He's like, I just almost got knocked out. I was like, oh my gosh. Speaking Keep your head on a swivel, dude. We saw a guy get knocked out in that game. Yes, we were watching Adams him right in front of us. He was out cold, and they were doing the salt, and all of a sudden he, he came to. It was like, that dude was out. It was frightening. That big watching tight end that got hit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, he was, him? it, it might have been. Well, that you was the play where they had that tight end and knocked him out. After the fact, they called. Uh, it it yeah. might have been BT, but it yeah, was, I think the, it was our linebacker. Yeah. Oh, it was the, the was Rulo. The, after the fact, they called targeting, and then, oh, yeah. Yeah, then they realized it wasn't. But it was, oh, just it was Bryce, a, yeah. Bryce and Torrey. Bryce and Torrey, yeah. yeah. And the guy was out cold. Yeah, and we then were watching he, it. And then all of a sudden, he came to him, and he was like a fish. Oh, where am I? And then they walked him off, but he was done. That's crazy. But that was the kind of game. The defense, again, brought it. Yeah, they did a great job. Do you, when you look at these stats, I mean, you're the coach. You got the win. That's the only one thing that matters. As a coach, what's the most important thing you look at on that stat sheet other than the score? Well, I think it depends on the side of the ball, you know, and what you want, what, what you're trying to accomplish. You know, every every week is different from our, our, you know, keys of victory. You know, for us, defensively, it always starts with stopping the run, you know. And uh, we had 59 yards rushing. You know, and that's that's pretty awesome. You on know, 41 attempts. Yeah, 
one point two, I think. Or yeah, something. that's that's um, that's shutting them down. Yeah. So it's it's uh, that that's extremely important when you're looking at this. If you can create turnovers on the defensive side, that's that's also very very huge. And feel really confident about those guys in the back end and what they're able to do from a coverage standpoint. So if you can stop the run and let those guys cover and do what they do best, we're gonna have a really good opportunity to get off the field on third down, which is another key to victory for us on the defensive side. And they were five of twenty. Uh, you know, at twenty percent, twenty five percent. I thought they were four twenty. I don't know if these were updated or not, but um, you know, those are extremely important statistics for us when we're when we're looking at this on Saturday. Of, you know, what what really causes us to win the game or not? Do you do you allow yourself to nitpick and look at the other teams' third down conversions? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> One for eight. Yeah, for sure. Were you? I mean, 100%. but you did But you're five for five in the red zone. Well, I mean, that, that's, it, it, you know, that's another thing for us. We, call, we talk about being situational masters, you know, on the offensive side. That's a key to victory for us on the offensive side. And, um, you know, you can look at the one for eight, and obviously we need to be better there. But I would also say we had eight third downs and 700 yards of offense. That means we weren't getting to third down very much. Right. You right. know, and so, um, you know, talk, we talk about being fast and efficient offensively. That's another key to victory. And, and when you're doing what we did on Saturday, you're, you're checking that box. But, that's the beautiful thing about football. There's always room for growth. There's always ways that you can improve. And but you need that after a, after an ass kicking like that and, and and a domination. You need to find those things to, to to not only for motivation but just to work on. Well, I mean, if we want to be the team at the end of the year that we want to be, then we have to get better. And there's always areas for improvement. You know, and you know, third downs and on the offense. Uh, you know, taking care of the football on the offense. Those are things that we have to do better. Um, Penalties. Penalties on special teams, particularly. I mean, we had six penalties on special teams on Saturday. It's tough. And they could they could call one on almost every return. I mean, it's I mean, it is what it is. You know, we we got to we got to be able to look in the mirror and um, find a way to get better. Well, you find it out. You have as we'll do another old name. There you go. A plethora, a little Howard Cosell name, a plethora of weapons. I mean, you have so many guys you can get the ball to, and you bring in your guy your fourth and fifth wide receivers come off the bench and you know nigel right down the middle i mean now you talk about speed to burn mm -hmm. i mean that's the thing of beauty watch him catch a ball at the 50 and then it's no contest yeah he, he turns it on and it's there's not many guys in the country that are going to catch him when he turns it on he can roll who's the fastest guy on the team probably nigel yeah yeah I mean, Donnie will say he is, but really, <laughs> I'll say me or Ben Wilson. <laughs> yeah, Ben, ben, ben might Wilson. be there. I think Ben and Nigel are right there, but okay. Nigel is rolling when he's rolling. Yeah, you know, right. and then Xavier. I mean, he's a good-looking wide receiver too, mm -hmm. and he runs that little slant. Then you know, the ball's just put right on him. I mean, it's it's almost like it's a seven-on-seven -seven drill times out there. Doesn't it look <laughs> like it? Uh, I, they they have a tendency to make it look easy, you know. But make no mistake that what they're doing, they practiced a lot to get to where they're at and they've worked really hard to you know get their skills to where they are to to make it look easy on Saturday and that's really our job as coaches is to make practice so hard that game days are easy well Joe and I always marveled at Chris Bonner the guy that won the national title here mm -hmm. he was probably the best long thrower we ever saw but I mean these two guys you got now I mean it's amazing how they hit the receivers in stride yeah they, and it's just like just laying it's like a long handoff to him 50 yards down the field. Yeah, they, we, we're, we've got some guys that can throw it. You know, it's uh, it's fun when you got guys that can throw it and guys that can run and guys that can block and and guys you know, that can tackle and yeah <laughs> and and pick off the ball and you know it's it's a uh, it's a joy to be around them every single day. Well, I saw Braley. We, you know, the coach's box was right next to our broadcast booth, which is always fun. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's more fun than others when when things aren't going well. But when things are going well, I looked over there one time and Braley was sitting like this. <laughs> And I just started laughing. I go, you know, you're up big when your offensive coordinator's got his hands behind yeah, his head. Yeah, what do we run now? Mm, yeah, oh, he's probably exactly. he's probably doing that at me because I'm like, if you throw the ball one more time, we're gonna have an issue. So do not throw the football again. <laughs> so you were telling him that? Yes. Or? Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It, was, it was still the offense was wide open late in the game. He's probably getting mad at me up in the box. I can only imagine what they say when they pull that headset up and say whatever they want to say. Oh, to no, they other. just praise you the whole yeah, time. Yeah, right. They're, they're, yeah. Nobody says anything <laughs> mean. Or... And then we had one of the ultimate ooh, hits of the year when Noah Purcell, I mean, that poor guy coming over the middle, I, I mean, that was a collision for the ages right there, and he just sent him backwards. I mean, everybody was just aghast. At how hard he hit that guy. Noah has one of the most heavy-handed 
I mean, he's just – he is so physical. I, I literally have had to tell him at practice, like, we go into a scrimmage, I'm like, Noah, listen, I know we're going live today, but – I cannot have you hurt any more offensive linemen. Like, didn't you say he's, he's a, oh he's concur- more concussions? Oh, he's, than anyone? he's given a bunch of guys concussions. He's, <laughs> he's the reason they invented those yeah. goofy looking padded. So they hit you pretty hard, wearing, right? I, I expect it, so I kind of lo- I kind of load up a little bit. If I'm like, okay, I got to double to Noah. Just be ready, Sanan. Be ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, at least you're smart enough to know that. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then Feeney, let's just talk about him coming off the. I mean, he had two straight plays. He made that poor tackle just look useless out there, uh, just a little knocking him aside. And and to be able to have that laser focus on the quarterback and not buy any of the fakes and just put him on the ground, it was – Yeah, I was proud of Feeney. You know, Feeney, Feeney got some more, uh, more reps this last game than he has uh, previously because of some injuries up front for us on the defensive line. And, you know, we, we had a conversation this week. He's like, Coach, I, I, I wanted more time, and I, I knew that when I got it, I had to make the most of it, you know. And he did that on Saturday. I was really proud of him, proud of the way that he, he played and that his his level of play did not – I mean, it didn't, it didn't falter um, to the level of competition. You know, he's playing at a high level, and so it's, 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 he's doing a good job. Do you guys call him Grandpa or anything? <laughs> no, we I think mean, a lot of old – The old man. Old Joe, man Feeney. You, you think Jim and I are old. Feeney, he's been here – well, well you made the comment he might be older than the assistant or the coaches. Yeah, I said, he's, yeah. he's old enough to be one of the coaches on that team. We let him have it for sure. Yeah. For sure. All right. Thunder Zone Pizza Tap House. It is the Pack Football Show brought to you by Rustler Implement, your local premier Kubota Case International Harvester and New Holland dealer. Please like their Facebook business page for a chance to win one of two $100 gift cards and receive all the updates and promotions they are offering. Same name, same family. Since 1960. We'll come back. We've got questions for the coach. If you've got a question, you can text me right now. 719-671-7574. 719-671-7574. Or you can tweet, Joe. I got one from work today. A guy right, that good. season so, ticket holder. He wanted me to ask you. All right. A little bit of motivation. We'll get to that. All right, be so a good we, one for the players, too. All right. So, and Uncle Charlie has checked in. His, so, we'll have his question when we come back. But first... Take this time out. It is the Pack Football Show from Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House on Fox Sports Pueblo. This is the Pack Football Show on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head over to Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap with your hosts, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi, along with Thunder Wolves head coach, Philip Veal. And welcome back. Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House, Pack Football Show. As we get ready for New Mexico Highlands this weekend, it's time for question and answer. Joe, you got one on the uh, tweet. Why don't you give us your question there first? I have a, a friend at work who's a season ticket holder, and he wanted to know you guys are kind of you're, you're on a roll. Why would you you played a you scored sixty six last week? You're playing a, a winless team this week. He doesn't want the coach speak on how you get focused. He wants how you get focused for going to get to play an O and a winless team after an. A butt kicking last week. It's not about them. It's about us. It's about our process. It's about us being the best in the country, and getting better. You know, that's that's what we preach, and that's what these guys buy into. And I hope at least. Donnie, you, know. you believe that faceless opponent? Hundred percent. I, I feel like with, with any team we play, there's going to be some some good parts about the game. You know, with receivers, if you're not locked in every play, like you can't get beat over the top. I learned that myself a couple weeks ago. So, I mean, ever. I mean, I, now it's just laser focus on how can I do my assignment every play and, and how can I grade out the best against a team that may be a little bit lesser. So now? Yeah, and uh, we know what we can do when we're all clicking. So just going into it, knowing that if we do our job, then we're basically unstoppable. It doesn't matter who we're playing. That's how I like to do it. So I, more or less way to everybody's being graded. It doesn't matter what the final score is or what happened on a play. The play could gain 40 yards, but you find somebody, hey, if you'd have done it better, we might have got 45. Well, I mean, every every play is graded. Every single play is graded by their position coach. And, um, you know, for you know, doing right technique, right assignment, execution, all of those things. You know, and so there's there's always again that's the beautiful thing about football. There's always areas for us to improve. You know, a chance will tell the story. Our quarterbacks coach, when I was coaching him at Fort Hayes, he said I got I threw my first touchdown pass, and we came in the next day. And you gave me a double negative on the touchdown pass. Oh, and, man. Yeah, I mean, it was the wrong read. It was the wrong throw. You know, obviously, it, it worked out. But, 
you know, you, you're, you're trying to find ways to coach everything, you know, and, and finding ways to improve and, and, be, and get better. And so the, the goal is not about any one team. It's about us. It's about us finding a way to reach our potential. And we can't do that if we focus on other people. If we're worried about external factors having to motivate us to be great, then we're not going to be very good. I, this would have been a question I would have loved to ask you when I was, you know, just coaching the, my son and, the, you know, they were 14 years old baseball. We, uh, we were playing a, a game and a guy, you know, we, he was at bat and we gave him the take sign because we were trying to get set up. And it was, so we told him to take a pitch. Well, he doesn't take a pitch. He hits a triple. So he gets on third. And I'm like, okay, do I rip the guy for not getting the sign right, or do I congratulate the guy for hitting a triple? And I didn't know. I didn't. I still to this day don't know what I should have done in that situation. Did he? Did he see the sign? Oh, I know he did. Yeah. Then, then that that's not. Yeah, you, he would. He would be. That would be a double, double negative. negative. Okay. Yeah. You know? See, I, I mean, you fired up the guy hit a triple, but it was also that wasn't what we had envisioned. Yeah. He was and three that, and zero, and we needed, you know, and he wasn't our best hitter, and. We wanted to get him on base, and we, you know, so I, I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to act. Well, that, that's where <laughs> exactly. it's, it's about the team. It's about the pack, right. right? It's about putting what you want aside for the betterment of the team, you know. And and sometimes that means taking a back seat. Sometimes that means doing things that you don't necessarily think you want to do or should do, right? For the betterment of the group. Well, one of our listeners wanting to know why you didn't use the locker rooms at Rexfield, but I don't think they understand. You go down, walk across, you. You did use the locker room facility in the other building there, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, we used the locker rooms that were provided to us. Yeah, so it's just – Well, Joe and I can you know closer. it's when the, place, <laughs> when the place first Listen opened, this. the visiting team went under the grandstand into the end. The home the team one. had to walk. Mm. Adams kept – they yards. stayed in Rex. They stayed over yeah. in the field house, it, gotcha. you know, where their normal stuff was. But in, in the brand new stuff – they let the visitors have the brand new locker rooms. They're like, that was mighty nice of them. And that only lasted one year. Yeah, one yeah. year they decided, you know what, maybe it's better if the yeah. visitors have to walk yeah, that was all, all the way down there. Uh, how about the Canon? Did yeah. uh, yeah, Canon get your attention? One of our listeners wanted to know that. Yeah, That was did. a big, booming howitzer, wasn't it? It was kind of cool because we were doing our, our pregame, uh, you know, thing that we do and as soon as we finished it they hit the deck cannon and it kind of lit us up a little bit we're like all right let's go it's time to go maybe we need a cannon here maybe what do you think that better is, get some gunpowder for that thing that is oh, a yeah. big going off a lot that is well that's, sure. that's, a, that's, a, that's exactly what i told jim they shot it off during their warm-up or after the net said hope we don't hear that sound very much today <laughs> yeah we and thought we it, didn't yeah we thought it might be the only time all day but then in the first quarter boom boom i mean they had a couple of big plays to fire that thing <laughs> All right, well, Uncle, we probably yeah. talked about that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Charlie, well, it's all, I got to go through Uncle Charlie's here. He was happy. He Uncle was happy. Charlie would be like at the debate last night. You ask him a question, and he's going to go on for about 20 minutes here, and then uh, what? could you answer the question? So let's see if Charlie can <laughs> ask the question here. Uh, our let's man. see. No one's safe. How do we keep the winning streak going against New Mexico Highlands? And avoid the rough start we had a little bit last week. Yeah, I mean, we changed some things up in practice to to try to facilitate a faster start. You know, I'm a big believer that what we do in practice carries over into a game, and and so trying to switch some things up to get started a little bit faster in practice to kind of reiterate that. And um, you know, we did good on good this week. The first thing that we did in practice just to kind of come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's is that go. Like 80% we got to get going. good on good, or is that full go good on good? Oh, no. I mean, it's the – we're not going to the ground. Right. But it's, but it's, it's, it's good it's on full good. full go. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, for us, it's full go. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it has to be free. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, that's that's the thing about practice, the, the intensity that you practice at. If you don't practice at 100%, you'll, you won't be able to replicate that on, on game day. If you practice at 80%, that's what you're going to get on game day. Yeah. And so you have to go full tilt. It doesn't matter how many plays you go. But if you're playing, if you're running a play, you gotta you gotta give it everything you got. Otherwise, you're creating, you know, not to get all scientific on you, no, but, but the, the the neural pathways in your mind, the the more that you're a, you take the foot off the gas, the more you're creating those pathways and using those pathways, the more you you revert to those. And if you're full throttle all the time, the more you're going to be full throttle. You well, know, and, and so and for people who don't know, good on good, we we normally say ones versus ones, or you know, yep. But good on good is kind of the better way to say it because. You got a lot of interchangeable ones. We do, we do. We got a lot of guys that contribute. We got a lot of guys that can start at a lot of places. There's no doubt. There's there's guys that are taking, and that's and that's you know that's the hard thing about it, but it's a beautiful thing about it. It's like you know you we got a lot of really talented football players that could be playing on 
and being the guy on a lot of different teams. We, we said that about Macy, didn't we? We were, we were looking at, you know, late in the game, we are like, these guys could start for a lot of teams. Yep. Yeah. Another uh, question coming in. Even though you won so big, were there any, he uses the word monumental disappointment about the way the game went? Or was there something that really happened that disappointed you in the game despite the outcome, or was it pretty much all positive? I think, I think my biggest disappointment, you know, walking away from that game, I, I thought we would be able to create more of an advantage on special teams than what we did on Saturday. You know, uh, preparing for that game, we felt like we had – a really good game plan of going in of how to exploit some things on special teams and and we didn't get that opportunity to do that and uh, or if we did get the opportunity we didn't exploit it and so that I think looking back on it that was probably my biggest disappointment you know from a, a schematic standpoint I think obviously the penalties again are things that we're, we have to continue to get better and and be better at uh, I, I you know there are a couple of those that were late in the game that I think I don't know if I agree with, but it's it is what it is, and, and we got to be we got to be better. When you talk about special teams, you try to fake punt late. Yeah, and was it just there, and you wanted to see it? Go? I, I wanted to put it on tape. That I, was that's, my call. That's, that's exactly yeah, what I said. It was my call, and and you know we it, it wasn't a good call, you know. And I I told the guys on on Monday, you know, like I I put our defense in a bad pos position because I I you know I I wanted to get it on tape. I wanted teams to have to prepare for it, and uh, and it wasn't a good look for it. So that was on me. Uh, also, uh, listen to me, find out here. The, the kickoff return, I go dovetails with a special return. Opening kickoff, is that a design play? You're going to run it out of there no matter what? No, because uh, no. Musa kind of slipped. And I guess at that point, when you slip, you probably should shut it down. But five yards deep, we're, they, the listeners just want to know was that we're going to go no matter no. what. I mean, we, we call the return, but we, we should have we we uh, had a fair catch on that. You know, it was deep enough in the end zone that that we we needed a fair catch that ball. And you know, for the for the guy that's returning it, he's not looking at where he's at. You know, he's thinking, I, I got to return this ball. So it's really the off returner that needs to go and say, Hey, no, stay. You know, and we'll take a knee, and then we'll we'll get the ball on the twenty five yard line. So that was, was that was one of the things that we coached up on Monday. You know, and and worked on that in practice. And so that's a fine line though, because you told you've told us all season aggressive, and you trust in your guys to make plays, especially on return game. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have some prolific returners. And so you kind of trust that. That's a gamble you're willing to take. I, I mean, yeah, to a certain extent. But uh, also, you, you need to be smart. Just because you want to be aggressive doesn't mean you're going to be reckless. You know? And no, I think... I'm not... <laughs> I should have used that my whole life. <laughs> exactly. Jeez, I you went to Central. I'm, I'm a little older now. You're I'm the best man from now, Central. You where was reckless. that? Where was that 40 years ago? <laughs> You're always going to be a little reckless. Thanks, Coach. Well, speaking of special teams in the return game, Joe and I always talk about this. seems like the old days, used to be a guy who stood at the 10-yard line. If he had to backpedal, you don't catch it. That's the eight now. We, we so that's where we're wondering, what is the, is there a magic yard line? Yeah, we use the heels at eight. If you have to back up at all, you're, you're not, you're not touching it. Because I'm seeing that at all levels. Yeah. Guys. I, I think it's, I don't know. I like anything. The, the game has progressed a little bit. Okay. You know, and I think punters and special teams coordinators are doing a really good job of pinning that thing deep. And so it, it was, even when I played, it was a 10 yard line. You know, and early in my coaching career is always the 10. And, and as it's kind of gone on, we, we've moved it back to the 8. Reasoning probably being because analytics probably tell you if we have to start a drive inside the 5, we're doomed. Well, so that's just, probably why you want to make sure you catch it. Yeah. Even I mean, if the eight's better than having to correct. take any chance going out at the 2 or 1. Correct. Yep. Correct. All right. All right. So there we go. See, Sweet. that's it. Learning. Yes. It's all about knowledge, right, guys? Yes, yes sir. sir. Guys are like these guys are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, these guys in the booth are. Yeah, they that's for sure. They don't know what they're telling. They don't know what they're doing. All right, I think I forgot to take care of. Uh, no, you got them. Both. Did I do steel city? Yeah, you did second time around. Well, I got to do them three times. And we got to get Bart, man. When's Bart going to come to the show? That's a great question. You know, I, I mean, no, he sponsors the show. All right, well, I'm going to do. I'm going to double check. It's Steel City Solar and Roofing. They're proud to sponsor the show. Okay, they are. And uh, we'll we'll do them one more time after the break. But I think I owe them one. There, so. All right. All right, we are at Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House. We have one final segment. We're going to talk about New Mexico Highlands. That comes your way next. It's the Pack Football Show on Fox Sports Pueblo. This is the Pack Football Show on Fox Sports 1350. Let's head over to Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap with your host, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi, along with Thunder Wolves head coach, Philip Veal. And welcome back. 
Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House. Final segment of the Pack Football Show brought to you by Rustler Implement. Same name, same family since 1960, as well as Steel City Solar and Roofing. Remember, they're your uh, new Tesla dealer. Power walls, batteries, and EV chargers helping you with all your energy solutions. We're at Thunder Zone Pizza and Tapas. How's the uh, grub there, guys? It's amazing. Excellent. Yeah, not bad, Excellent. huh? Amazing. Delicious. You've seen how many wings I could eat during the break. <laughs> <laughs> you got you to you you do what you got to do. I, I see how many I can eat after the show. Jim takes his time. He's... He's, yeah, well, you know, I, when you keep it small, you get it all. He just kind of, mm. That's like when you go to a wedding buffet and everybody <laughs> wants to get in line first and then you have to be all polite. But if you just wait a half a click and go to the back, nobody cares what you mop up. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. Yeah. You mop up. You make goulash. Yes, yeah, you just mop yeah, up. Yeah, there you go. You a fan of goulash, Phil? You ever do goulash? Uh, I don't know if I have. You know, that's no. where you just take everything and just throw it into a big pile and just see what. Nah. I'm not. That's I like enough. it. That's Even enough. if it's different, I like it separated on my plate. Oh, you're oh, one of those. So, you like yeah. the little. The, the, the plates where it's no i don't need like the ribs on the plate you know i just i i'm gonna have like if i have salad i'm gonna have salad right here i'm gonna have you know whatever right here whatever right here you know Are, it can't touch no i don't that's okay oh, okay that's you're okay. not i'm that not like, OCD. i'm not like, weird with so it, you're not you know? you're not a fan of the lasagna smoothie then huh you know what we had lasagna today we had the scot we had the scholars and uh oh the Luncheon, uh, luncheon yeah. today with the, with some of the donors, and we had lasagna and salad. Mm. And it was fantastic, and I had a little ranch run off into the the lasagna, little, little bechamel sauce. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's not that's not, a, not a bad way to a go. Little cream sauce. Was I make a good bechamel sauce with my lasagna. Mm. Hey, it's Hall of Fame Italian, week, baby. <laughs> Hall of Fame weekend. You got one of the great all time teams here. Yeah, I'm excited. This week in the 1982 team, Coach yeah. Riston and company. It's Looking be, forward to seeing those guys. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I'm excited to meet some of those guys, and and uh, I guess we're going to have like 30 of them. Or something. Yeah, here. that's that's what right around there. That's, that's the, awesome. That's the over under. How old okay. were you at, 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 in eighty two? Oh, eighty two. Let's see. I was not born. <laughs> oh, oh man. Oh, oh, oh yeah. that. All right. That's. I was. I a, was born in eighty five. I was a sophomore in high school, man. Yeah, that's. I, was, I am just ancient. The gray ages me pretty pretty yeah. much. Well, I had my fortieth reunion this past weekend. Yeah. I had my twentieth. I see. There you go. Yeah. This last year. Forty. Forty yeah. of them. Well, I was an intern in the uh, sports information department. A guy like uh, Ben, only I had Greg Smith, who we saw a couple years back when we, we went did. back to uh, yep. uh, Grand Valley. He's a Michigan guy. So I remember spending all night making big posters and stuff, getting ready <laughs> for the big playoff game. Of course, John was hurt. That didn't help. He hurt his leg before Highlands. the game before. Yeah, It was actually Western New Mexico. Western New Mexico. No, I mean, Western, yeah, the 10-hour yeah. bus ride yeah, back. He, yeah, he won't. He held that against me for a while. I'm like, oh, he, I wasn't there. He, he, yeah, sorry. what the heck? Well, his coach there. I'm sorry. I don't no, have to do he, it. He has PTSD. <laughs> Every time we had to go to Silver City, it was like. It's a tough place to play. Yeah, he did not want. I mean, yeah. I remember the first year they, they brought the program back. Yeah. I did, I did the bus ride to do a first-person story about that. Oh, really? And. Half that was your first trip. You should have taken the second trip. No, no, I, I did it. Just, I, I just wanted to be on that, you know, to see what yeah, it was see like. Yeah, see what it was yeah. like. And, I've done that one. On and I sat bus. right behind Risto there and back, and I never heard somebody complain oh, more God. about one location in my life. No than, negativity. Than, than Risto and, and Silver City. <laughs> then uh, Cam McDonald. Uh, yeah, being honored. That's one of the great man, all-time he was running backs. Man, oh man, goodness he gracious! Wait till you guys meet Cam McDonald. I was yeah. looking at his stats and yes. I was like shocked. No, he unbelievable, unreal. Energizer Bunny. And I I remember watching him at Columbine and thinking, man, this kid is really yeah. good. And then Risto got him here, and he was even better here than he was in high school. Yeah. He has Howard Russell feet. Yeah, in a in a <laughs> pint-sized body. <laughs> And it was amazing. So that'll be good this weekend. Let's talk about Highlands, Phil. You got them coming in. Uh, been a little bit of a struggle this year, but they show flashes. I guess that's what you worry about is those flashes making big plays on you, don't you? Yeah, I mean, again, it's a, it's a team that, you know, their head coach is brand new. He, and I, a guy that I really respect a lot. I mean, he's he's been very successful at the junior college level. He was the head coach at New Mexico Military and won a national championship in, in 2021. And, has done really well everywhere he's been. And, uh, you know, he, he's gotten some transfers in there. And, again, you know, you, you, you grow and learn as the season goes on. And um, they're getting better as the season goes on. You know, they're playing better quality later. Uh, and, and they're getting better as well. And, um, you know, offensively, what they do offensively, it's, it's, it's hard to prepare for. It really is. And their OC is a guy that I really respect a lot. He was at Nebraska Kearney. 
uh, for a long time with with Josh Lynn and and won won a championship there and took that team to the playoffs. And then last year he was the offensive coordinator at, at Army. Really? Yeah. And uh, he's he's very very smart. I mean, and if you look at their offensive statistics, they're second in the in the conference right now in rushing. Really? They're fourth in the conference in passing. And uh, they they what they do offensively makes it makes it very difficult. And then on top of that, they're first in the conference in time of possession. And so they're gonna they're gonna run a, a, a gun option attack. They're gonna hold on to the football. They're gonna get into the best play. We they're really gonna play on our discipline defensively. You know, if we are not disciplined with great eye and gap discipline, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to stop their offense because they are very talented. And, and when option teams, they do what they do regardless of who they see. And they've had success doing that. And so we, we cannot think that we're just going to show up and beat these guys. We, we have to play our best football on Saturday. If we don't, it's going to be a dogfight. And so, um, you know, these guys know, they understand who we're playing, and they understand the, what's, at, what's at stake. And they've, been, they've had two great days of prep. We've got to continue that tomorrow with our Thursday practice and uh, keep getting better. I suppose you guys in your meetings – Stress that when you get in your little group, say, hey, focus, right? Oh, yeah, we cannot let the foot off the gas pedal at all. So just staying focused and just, like I said, making it about us, but also knowing who we're playing as well, and just to continue the, that consistency and that upward climb. The ultimate equalizer in football is the triple option, and uh, this is the triple option team. Y'all heard it, second in rushing, uh, fourth in passing. I mean, I get excited when I hear teams are good at passing. I like when they throw the ball. You and all DBs, because what it's not a challenge, it's a what? Yes, sir. An, an opportunity. opportunity. Yes, sir. And you I know, that it. is like the best thing we've heard this year. Yeah. Is this is an opportunity. Who, who told us that? That was uh, McKinney. Was? Keith. Yeah, it was Keith. Yep. Keith McKinney came out and he said, now you, it's going to be a challenge. Challenge? No, it's an opportunity. I want him to throw 50 times. That's 50 <laughs> times I got world. a chance to get one. Yes, sir. All right, that's going to wrap things up. Before we go, though, you know what we're going to do? I don't. Our guy next to us, Greater Pueblo Sports Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Nominee. He's yeah. made it. Congrats. You're going to honor him in November. Oh, he's a nominee? No, I well, elected. Well, no, he's inductee, I guess. Okay, I there you go. Yeah, I was going to say, so it's still up, up for no, grabs. No, no, I actually he got in. Inductee. Good for you, man. Yeah, no. It was Congratulations. Good. That's awesome. Call. I got the call, and I said, did you run out of legends so you got to go JV role players now or what? And they said, no, you're going in as a contributor, not an athlete. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. well, that's <laughs> but, uh, but, no, it's a tremendous honor. All Congratulations. Right. Thank you. You deserve it. All right. We're going to be on the air on Saturday at 1.30. It's a 2 o'clock kick. Hall of Fame day plus homecoming. So a, a, a veritable plethora again. I'm going to use that word again, Ben. Go to the website. It's unbelievable, all the stories. That's great. It's a good history. Yeah, no, it's a really good deal. That's uh, come through here. I don't so. know how Ben sleeps with the stories he that he writes. They're he so in-depth. Yeah, yeah. And he puts out – how many do you put out a week, Ben? A lot. A lot. Well, <laughs> Every a lot. day there's a new thing up there. I'm like, goodness But gracious. we still got to give him grief. Oh, he's <laughs> – You know why? Because he's Ben. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's You're ben. the man, Ben. Because he's, he's ben. big Ben. Ben Green Big, as I tried to name him last year. He didn't like I that. I told him on the air. I go, it's Ben Greenberg. I wait a minute. It's not a Green Bay. It's Greenberg. But that was <laughs> so we've always uh, stuck with that. Special thanks to Ben Greenberg. Catch all this stuff there on GoThunderwolves.com. It's uh, some great stuff. Special thanks uh, to uh, our producers and engineer tonight. Now, I asked her ahead of time. I know we're going a little bit over here, but uh, Lindsey Broyles. Now I had to ask her. Now, well, see, that's another old name. The only Joe and I are going to remember Frank Broyles. The great Frank Broyles, old football at player. Arkansas. Yeah. yeah was the athletic director and used to be uh, the coach, and he used to be on uh, ABC, right? Yep, yep. With Chris Shankle. Yes. Now, that's somebody that no one will get but you and me. But that's all right. And ben, gets, these are all old sportscasters and coaches, by the way. So And Cajun like, Lang what? is also our other <laughs> producer into tonight. Sinan Chapel. Sinan. 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 God Sinan. dang it. I'm going to. Would you change your name? <laughs> All right. But in Jim's defense, phonetically on the roster, it says Sinon. Yeah. Oh, it does. It does. Yeah, so oh. we need to. Donovan English. Yes, sir. Would you like to go by Donovan or Donnie? Um, I, I go by both. Donnie. Yeah. Donnie, Donnie, what's Donnie. your nickname? Okay. Yeah. Young Strap. D.E.? Yeah. Yeah. People call me Young Strap, well, too. Because Phil has taught yeah, Every highlight he gave today was E-P-I-E-E-E-I. -E 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 -E. It's all the initials. So. <laughs> Donnie meets Sinon. Yes, sir. No, that's <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. Paul Plinsky was here as well, the athletic director. Special thanks uh, to our sponsor, Steel City Solar. 
and Rustler Implement, as well as everybody here at Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House. For Joe Servi, for Phil Vigil, I'm Jim Brooks. We'll talk to you on Saturday, 1.30 pregame, 2 o'clock kickoff right here on Fox Sports Pueblo. Good night, everybody.